Tene Brahma Vijaya Adikavaye Muyantia Tsuraya. Tene Brahma Vijaya Adikavaye Muyantia Tsuraya. Tejo Varimadam Yatavani Mayo Yatrati Sargon Misha. Damna Swena Sadani Rasta Kuhakam Satyam Param Dimahi. O my Lord, Shri Krishna, son of Vasudeva. O my Lord, Shri Krishna, son of Vasudeva. O all pervading personality of God. O all pervading personality of God. I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I offer my respectful obeisances. I meditate upon Lord Shri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon Lord Shri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. And the primeval cause of all causes. And the primeval cause of all causes. Of the creation. Sustenance and destruction of the manifested universes. <coughs> he is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. The original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations of water seen on fire or land seen on water. Only because of him do the material universes, temporary manifested by the reaction to the three modes of material nature, Appear factual, although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna, who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode, which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma projita kaitravotra. Paramo nematsuvanam sitam. Vedyam vastuvam atra vastu. Vedyam vastuvam atra vastu. Vedyam vastuvam atra vastu. Nimva bhave vishvara. Tati urudya bhavitya tisra. Vedyam vedyam vishvara shubhit prasyana. Which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. Which is understandable by those who are just fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity is sufficient in itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? As soon as one uh, <coughs> attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam, By this culture of knowledge. By this culture of knowledge. The Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama Kapatoro Galitam Falam. Nigama Kapalo Kalitam. Sukumukad Amrita Dravya Samyatam. Sukamukad Amrita Dravya Samyatam. Pibata Bhagavatam Rasam Alayam. Pibata Bhagavatam Rasam Alayam. Muhur Aho Raskabu Vibhav Kaha. O oh, expert and thoughtful man, relish Srimad Bhagavatam. The mature fruit of the desired to Vedic literatures. Thank you. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadev Goswami. Therefore, its fruit has become even more tasteful. Although its nectarine juice was already relished for all. Including 
liberated souls. Shinvatam Swakata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana Hidyam Taksto Hiyabhadrani Vidunati Suhitsatam To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita is it self-righteous activity. And for one who hears about Krishna, Lord Krishna who is dwelling in everyone's heart, Uh, acts as a best wishing friend and purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. Nasta presu bhadresu nityam bhagavata sevaya bhagavati tamasloke bhakti bhavati naistiki. In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. as he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavad Gita and, and from the devotees, he becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajas tamo bhava kamaloba dayas chaye chete tarin avidam stitvam satve prasiddhati by development of devotional service, one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. One becomes freed from the development of passion and ignorance. And thus, material lust and avarice are diminished. When these impurities are wiped away, the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness, becomes enlivened by devotional service, and understands the science of God perfectly. Vidyate hridaya grantis Chidyante sarvasam saya, Shiyante chaschakarmani, Drista evat manishwari. Thus, Bhakti Yoga severs the hard knot of material affection and enables one to come at once to the stage of a samsayam samagram, understanding of the supreme absolute truth, personality of Godhead. Therefore, only by hearing about, uh, hearing from Krishna or from his devotee, in Krishna consciousness, I didn't say that. Just, uh, he said, I, I, I know, but give me a chance to say it. Right? So don't don't anticipate. <coughs> in Krishna consciousness. Can one understand the science of Krishna? Can one understand the science of Krishna? Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 17, Verse Number 42. Rishasya Nastam Strinpadan. Oh, is it 41? Okay. Haitani. Nasaveta Bubushu Purusha Kvachit Vise Sato Dharma Silo Raja Loka Patir Guru Translation by Srila Prabhupada. Therefore, whoever desires progressive well being, especially kings, religionists, public leaders, brahmanas, and sannyasis should never come in contact with the four above-mentioned irreligious principles. Purported by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. The brahmanas are the religious preceptors for all other castes, and the sannyasis are the spiritual masters for all the castes 
and orders the society. So also are the king and the public leaders who are responsible for the material welfare of all people. The progressive religionists and those who are responsible for human beings or those who do not want to spoil their valuable human lives should refrain from all the principles of irreligiosity, especially illicit connection with women. If a brahmana is not truthful, all his claims as a brahmana at once become null and void. If a sannyasi is illicitly connected with women, all his claims as a sannyasi at once become false. Similarly, if the king and the public leader are unnecessarily proud or habituated to drinking and smoking, certainly they become disqualified to discharge public welfare activities. Truthfulness is the basic principle for all religions. The four leaders of the human society, namely sannyasis, the brahmana, the king, and the public leader must be tested crucially by their character and qualification. Before one can be accepted as a spiritual or material master of society, he must be tested by the above-mentioned criteria of character. Such public leaders may be less qualified in academic qualifications, but it is necessary primarily that they be free from the contamination of the four disqualifications, namely gambling, drinking, prostitution, and animal slaughter. Srila Prabhupada Patita Pavan Ekije. So Prabhupada said that Krishna consciousness is about developing one's character. And material life is about developing one's uh, wealth so that they can engage in unbridled sense, uh, sense gratification. So here we have the difference between two types of education. The materialists are educated to develop wealth in order to have sustained sense gratification. And the devotee is educated to develop character <laughs> by avoiding the four principles or the four pillars of sinful activity and engaging in the four types of recommended uh, devotional service uh, which are uh, regularly hearing and chanting Bhagavad Gita, regularly uh, associating with devotees, regularly hearing and chanting Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam, regularly association, associating with devotees, and uh, chanting uh, prescribed number of rounds, at least 16 good rounds, and, uh, and then more if you have time, and uh, finally, engaging in deity worship. So the, these activities develop the character of a person. This is real education, as it's explained in the 13th chapter, 8th and uh, 12th verse, Amani Dvama Dhamma Dvama Himsa Santar Arjavam, and so forth. These 20 qualities of education, real education, uh, are given. And that is the difference between material education and spiritual education. As long as we push our children only for spiritual edu uh, material education, they will be failures in life. They'll not be able to go back to Godhead. They'll work hard like beasts of burden their whole life, and they'll waste their time in sense gratification. Uh, so uh, parents have to decide what they want for their children. You want them to be karmis, okay? You want them to be devotees. You have to take the responsibility uh, along with uh, temple uh, authorities to train them to develop their character by avoiding the four pillars of sin and engaging in the four regulated, regulated principles for developing uh, higher states of consciousness, spiritual consciousness. So in society, in, in the Vedic society, you have the brahmanas, 
Kshatriyas, Vaishas, and Sudras. And they have specific duties that they have to perform. You cannot be a Brahmana unless you uh, adhere to those duties and responsibilities and so forth. The same with sannyasis, well, same with uh, Kshatriyas, Vaishas, and Sudras. And then in the ashrama system, the sannyasis and uh, the vanaprastas and the grihastas and the brahmacharis, they also have specific duties that they have to follow. And if they don't, then they're not considered um, uh, to be following correctly the process of devotional service. So Prabhupada says, the brahmanas are the religious preceptors for all other castes, and the sannyasis are the spiritual masters for all the castes and orders of society. So also are the king and the public leaders who are responsible for the w material welfare of all people. So you have the brahmanas and the sannyasis that are, that, are, that are supposed to inspire the spiritual welfare of all people, and then you have the kings and the chachas who are responsible for the material welfare, which includes uh, life, liberty, and the pursuit of Krishna consciousness. Not life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness, but the pursuit of Krishna consciousness. The progressive religionists and those who are responsible human beings, or those who do not want to spoil their valuable human lives, should reframe from all the principles of irreligiosity, especially illicit connection with women. So uh, the Vedic society, uh, let's, let's say you have Brahmanas, Chachas, Vaishas, Sudras, and then in the ashrama system, you have Brahmacharis, Grihastas, Vanaprastas, and Sannyasis. Well, four of the ash uh, three of the ashrama uh, classifications there is no connection at all with, uh, or no intimate connection with uh, uh, men and women. It's only in the married stage or grihasta stage that there is more uh, uh, connection. But even that connection is regulated according to uh, the Vedic instructions. So Prabhupada once said in a letter, he said, Men are good and women are good, but when they come together, they become no good. So, <laughs> uh, of course, the exception is when the husband and wife are both Krishna conscious and work cooperatively, work cooperatively to serve Guru and Krishna, then they are all good. But when they're just uh, engaged in mundane activities, they're no good. And you can see that uh, in the material world, even now uh, in India, there's a lot of divorce where it didn't exist so much in India before. Uh, and it was less uh, prevalent in the West, but now it's become a, uh, a big industry. You have lawyers who only uh, deal with divorce cases. <laughs> that means there's a lot of customers. And uh, so this idea of getting married and then getting divorced and then getting married again and getting divorced. So some people, like movie stars, sometimes they get married and divorced 13, 14, 15 times in their lifetime. So uh, that's because the husband and wife don't engage in any serious spiritual activity. They're only interested in sense gratification. And sense gratification, as we've explained before, I'll say it one more time, uh, it's the law of nature that if you try to please your senses in a selfish way, it is always accompanied by misery. So the same way, uh, if, there are just, if marriage is just based on mutual sense gratification, they will be very loose uh, let's say, connections. And, and when there's some problem with sense gratification, immediately there's divorce. So the regulation of the relationship between men and women based on devotional service is important to maintain the stability of the society, especially the vow of marriage, 
of sacred marriage is there shall never be any separation in this lifetime. And even there's an there's intimation that there will not be any separation eternally. You have eternal couples in Vaikuntha, and you also have examples of eternal couples in Goloka. So uh, the vow of marriage is extremely important to maintain the stability of society where children have a right to have a mother and father for the rest of their life. If not, then the, the children's psychological and spiritual development is stunted and the parents suffer uh, due to uh, incompatibility in many ways. So compatibility and incompatibility are actually material concepts because uh, when one gets married in Krishna consciousness, they make a vow that there will never be separation. So uh, this type of, now you might say, oh, wait a minute, the, the husband takes sannyas. Uh, yes, that's a fact, but only with the permission of the wife. He does not, he cannot, like uh, no one is given sannyas in ISKCON now if they whimsically leave their wife. In order to become a sannyasi or a member of the GBC, a governing body commission, your wife has to give com permission if you're married. So we see the uh, Vedic culture is based on rules and regulations. Uh, and it's based on respect for holy persons and for Krishna. But material life, it's different. They say, no God, no master. That's, that's a theme. No God, no master. No authority. We'll do whatever we want. And, and therefore, this chaos in material uh, culture today and material society. So then it says, pro the progressive religionists and those who are responsible human beings or those who do not want to spoil their valuable, valuable human lives should reframe from all the principles of irreligiosity, especially illicit connection with women. If a brahmana is not truthful, all his claims as a brahmana are at once, uh, are, uh, all his claims as a brahmana at once become null and void. Okay. If a sannyasi is illicitly connected with women, all his claims as a sannyasi are at once, or at once become false. Similarly, if the king and the public leader are unnecessarily proud or habituated to drinking and smoking, certainly they become disqualified to discharge public welfare activities. Truthfulness is the basic principle for all religions. The four leaders of the human society, namely the sannyasis, the brahmanas, the king, and the public leader, must be tested crucially by their character and qualification. So. What is the test of character? Well, you had the, even Chanakya Pandit, who's not a devotee, but he's a moralist. He, uh, uh, Prabhupada has quoted him uh, in one of his moral uh, teachings, and he says, He says, Matravat, get the exact words. Matravat paradaravyesu, paradaresu, paradaravyesu lostravat, atmavat sarvabhutesu yapasyati sapandita. So Prabhupada quotes this verse often. And he said, and it means one who sees other wives, others' wives as his mother, who sees all other possessions as insignificant as a lump of clay, and who sees all living beings as himself. Such a person is considered a learned man. In an alternate translation, Prabhupada says, one who sees all other women except his wife, like his mother. And also, a woman who sees all men 
as her father except her husband, Who's, who consider the uh, other people's wealth like pebbles in the street, and uh, who equally see all living entities or treat others as, as he would want to be treated. In other words, the golden rule. The golden rule is here. Uh, such a person is considered a learned man. So these are the criterions by which we can decide if someone has spiritual character or good character or not good character. Now, as far as spiritual character goes, uh, this, is, this is just for a good character. As far as spiritual character goes, that's a little bit more, uh, let's say, rigorous. Therefore, it says in the Bhagavad Gita, 17th chapter, <coughs> there are three things. First is the austerity of the body, second is austerity of speech, and third is austerity of the mind. So it says, austerity of the body consists in worship of the Supreme Lord, the Brahmanas, the spiritual master, and superiors like the father and mother, and in cleanliness, simplicity, celibacy, and nonviolence. And then austerity of speech is consists in speaking words that are truthful, pleasing, beneficial, and not agitating to others, and also in regularly reciting Vedic literature. And then austerity of the mind is satisfaction, simplicity, gravity, self-control, and purification of one's existence are the austerities of the mind. So we see, yeah, you have uh, Chanakya Pandit's uh, definition of good character, and then there's more for a devotee the austerity of the body, words, and the mind. Okay, so these, this is all about developing character. And it can happen actually in a very natural, easy way by chanting Hare Krishna sincerely, associating with good devotees, regularly attending classes, hearing and chanting, regularly going out on Sankirtan and preaching, or at least preaching, I mean, whether in the temple or outside, and taking prasadam, bathing at least twice or three times a day, and, uh, and following all the different practices of, of devotees. A person is judged by the way they speak. So if they use foul language, if they uh, talk about nonsense things and uh, behave in uh, inappropriate ways, et cetera, they, you can understand that they're, they're very low class character. On the other hand, if they're uh, usually speaking about Krishna, meditating and striving always for devotional service uh, and being respectful to others, then you can see that they have made some spiritual advancement and they're on the good path if they continue like that. Okay, then Prabhupada says, the four leaders of human society, namely the sannyasis, the brahmanas, the king and the public leader, must be tested crucially by their character and qualification before one can be accepted as a spiritual or material master of society, he or she must be tested by the above mentioned criteria of character. Such public leaders may be less qualified in academic qualification, but it is necessary primarily that they be free from the contamination of the four disqualifications, namely gambling, drinking, prostitution, and animal slaughter. Haribo. Mokoris Kasila Prabhupada Kijay. So I wanted to say something about uh, Tulsi uh, Shalagram uh, Vivaha, which we're going to celebrate today. There is uh, the glories of Tulsi Puja from the Ganga Garga Samhita, and it was translated by Sriman Kushakrata Das, who unfortunately 
has left his body so, some years ago. So the translation goes as follows. Shri Radha, the goddess of the Rasa dance, spoke to her friend Chandra Nana, the best of the knowers of religion. Shri Radha said, please tell me what kind of worship I should perform to please Sri Krishna. Worship that will bring auspiciousness, piety, and the fulfillment of my desire. Oh, beautiful one, you heard the religious scriptures from Garga Muni's own mouth. Oh, noble-hearted one, please tell me what vow or what worship I should perform. So this is Radharani's uh, request to her friend Chandranana. Hearing Radha's words and reflecting on them in her heart for a moment, Chandranana, the best of all friends, replied, Oh, Radha, service to Tulsi gives the greatest piety, the greatest good fortune, and the greatest benediction. <clears throat> it gives Lord Krishna's association. You should always gaze on Tulsi, touch her, then she will grant you, it, she will grant your desire. They who day after day serve Tulsi in these nine ways attain the results of pious deeds performed in many thousands of millions of yugas. A yuga lasts 4,300,000 years. <laughs> so as many branches, sub-branches, seeds, flowers, and leaves as are on the Tulsi, as are on the Tulsi, a person has planted so many ancestors and descendants in the family of the devotee for thousands of kalpa yugas will go to Lord Krishna's transcendental abode. That's an astounding statement. Let me read that again. They who day after day serve Tulsi in these nine ways attain the results of pious deeds performed in many thousands of millions of yugas, as many branches, sub-branches, seeds, flowers, and leaves are on the Tulsi that he has planted, so many ancestors and descendants in his family for thousands of kalpa yugas will go to Lord Krishna's transcendental abode. That means he'll be liberating millions and millions of people that were somehow or other related to you in previous lifetimes. O oh Radha, by offering him every flower and leaf that exists, a person who, with offerings of tulsi leaves, worships Lord Krishna, is not touched by sin, as a lotus is not touched by water. A home in the midst of a tulsi forest is a sacred pilgrimage place. Yamaraja's servants will never enter that home. For persons who plant, protect, water, see or touch her, Tulsi burns the sins committed with the body, mind, and words. On a single Tulsi leaf, the holy places beginning with Pushkara, the sacred rivers beginning with the Ganga, and the deities headed by Lord Vasudeva reside. Even though stained with a hundred sins, a person who touches a Tulsi Manjari as he leaves this life does not see Yamaraja. O oh friend, as four-faced Brahma cannot describe all the glories of Lord Krishna who holds the Sarnga bow, so he cannot describe all the glories of Tulasi. A man or woman who suffers sand, who offers sandalwood paste and Tulsi to Sri Krishna Chandra's feet attains the results I have told to you. O Gopi, serve Tulasi every day. Then Sri Krishna will come under your control, having won his heart. After hearing Chandra Nana's words, Sri Radha, the queen of the Rasa dance, in order to please Lord Krishna, began to serve Tulasi. Taking Tulasi, beautiful with many green leaves, to the middle of a Ketaki forest and placing her in a Tulsi temple that was round, tall, a hundred hastas in size, beautiful with walls of gold and rubies, splendid with an outer wall of emeralds 
diamonds, and pearls decorated with chintamani gems, arched gateways, gold flags, and gold awnings everywhere, and glorious like Indra's palace. At the time of the star Abhijit, saintly Radha served Sri Tulasi, beginning with the full moon of the month of Asvina, September, October, and ending with the full moon of Chaitra, March, April. To please Sri Krishna, saintly Radha followed a vow with great devotion. Month after month, she sprinkled Tulasi with milk, sugarcane juice, grape juice, mango juice, panchamrita, and many kinds of sweet and cool juices. On the first day of Vaishaka, April, May, she ended the vow. Krishna, a uh, king, Rishabhanu's daughter, Radha, then pleased 200,000 brahmanas with a great feast of 56 courses. Then Radha gave them dakshina of a hundred bharas of gold and pearls to each brahmana. The demigod showered flowers on the Tulsi temple. Then, seated on a glorious throne on a gold pedestal, her eyes like lotus petals and her gold crown and earrings glittering, beautiful four-armed Tulasi, who is dear to Lord Krishna, appeared. Descending from the sky, Tulasi, beautiful as a flowering vine, with her forearms embraced and then kissed Radha, who wore a new Vijayanti garland and whose snake-like braids were covered with a yellow cloth, she, Tulasi, said, O daughter of Kalavati, I am pleased with you. I am eternally conquered by your loving devotion. O beautiful one, as if you were an ordinary human being, you very carefully followed this vow. The desire that fills your heart, mind, and intelligence and senses will be attained. Lord Krishna will be kind to you. You are very fortunate. To Tulasi, who spoke these words and who is dear to Lord Krishna, Radha bowed and said, May I have unalloyed devotion for Lord Krishna's lotus feet, saying, So be it, Krishna's beloved Tulasi disappeared. Then Radha, King Rishabhanu's daughter, went home happy at heart. A devotee who hears this wonderful story of Sri Radha attains first the three goals of material life and then the supreme spiritual goal of life. The worshiping of Srimati Tulsi Devi, a text excerpted from the Sri Vrindavan Dham. Every home with a Tulsi plant is a place of pilgrimage and no diseases, messengers of Yama, the god of death, can enter it. Skanda Purana 2.4.8.13, Padma Purana Uttarakanda. Where, what, wherever the aroma of Tulsi is carried by the wind, it purifies the atmosphere and frees all animals from all baser tendencies. Padma Purana Uttarakhand. Vishnu, the lord of the three worlds, takes up abode in the village or the house where Tulsi is grown. In such a house, no one suffers calamities like poverty, illness, or separations from dear ones. Padma Purana Uttarakhand, 624, 31, and 32. Shimati Tulsi Devi Ki Jai, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai, Guru Premanandi Haribo. Are there any questions? Yeah, and a Brahmin. So, Guru Maharaj, so just repeat the question. So, the Chanakya Pandit was, this is where the distinction between a Brahmana versus a Vaishnava yes. comes. Where in he was a moralist, he was a Brahmana, and he taught uh, basically how to uh, remain in the mode of goodness your whole life with his moral instructions. Prabhupada says he was not a uh, devotee. Uh, however, Prabhupada quotes him because part of traditional education in India was to learn the Chanaka Niti Shastra. Mm. 
it was taught to all kids. So Ch Prabhupada would quote uh, many times uh, different verses uh, from the Chanaka Niti Shastra. And, uh, but this particular one, Matravat Sarva uh, Dari Su, Lostravat uh, Paradravye Su, Atmavat Sarva Bhute Su. Uh, this is a very important uh, verse that Prabhupada quoted that, that indicates what is good character. However, it's good character in uh, the best of the mundane sense, uh, but it is, it, he, he accepted it as an important instruction. Yeah. Yeah, and, and thank you for uh, referring to that 17th chapter where the three verses give the complete picture of uh, the it's real character. It's not complete, but it's, it's, uh, it's further explanation. There are other verses to have the complete picture, but they're mm. important verses. It's austerity of the body, words, and the mind. Correct. And, and then of course, today we, we heard that one must, uh, if they want to be a leader, must uh, be completely free, completely free of the four types of uh, sinful activity. Correct. And then even further, it says uh, you're a uh, a uh, sannyasi. Uh, there's you know you 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 will not be uh, let's say successful unless you're completely truthful, right? And and then for brahmana and so forth. questions. I got questions off the internet. Yeah. First one is, are we streaming anything for Tulsi this evening? Yes. What time would that be? I'm not sure. You have to ask uh, Shivas. Okay, because my notes, I looked at my notes again. It was like 5 to 7. In the okay, evening. and that's what it is. The other one was, uh, what were you reading from for the Tulsi story? Well, it's... it's it's, uh, I, I said it right in the beginning, it's the glories of Tulsi Puja from the Sri Garga Samhita, translated, and, and Sri Garga Samhita, second chapter, 16th verse, translated by Sriman Kushakrata Dasa. You can see, you can find it on the internet. And he's, he was his kind devotee who left his body a long time ago, actually, and he translated many, many Vaishnava scriptures. He was an expert in Sanskrit. And this is one of the books that he translated. He translated a whole bunch of, uh, let's say, not so well-known Vaishnava scriptures, not so well-known to us. And one of them is the Sri Garga Samhita. Okay. Well, Maharaj, you also had Another, is that the Chanakya Niti book? The well, uh, that, no. Uh, I mean, Machavat Sarvapari, Dravyas, Dharis. No, that, that's one verse. The no, Chanakya Niti, what, what no, not book? my book. This is a verse book of frequently quotes, frequent quotes by Srila Prabhupada. Uh -huh. Yeah. Haribo, all glories to Prabhupada. 